If you're getting ready to buy a used car, you're probably going to want to stay away from these vehicles. Every decision we make has a plus or minus and it has a benefit and a take back. So when we're buying new, we know that we have some benefits of that, hey, we're the only owner of the car. We're not going to have issues. Most likely if we do, it's covered under warranty. But the downside is, is you pay the most money for that car and you have the most depreciation in that car. When you buy used, you pay the least amount of money for the car, but you may have a car with issues that are not covered under warranty. So that's where this video comes in as the owner of Mike's Car Store here in Georgetown, Indiana. I wanna share with you the five used cars that I recommend you not buying. This video stems from the recent 2023 JD Power and Associates reliability and dependability ratings come in public. And it always comes to me this time of year and I like to uh, post those because Chevrolet over the last few years has done really good. But what most people don't realize is that my dog is over here squeaking her ball and I don't know what she's doing this for. But anyways, what most people don't realize is that these are three year old vehicles that they are getting studies done on. So in 2023, these would be owners in 2020 buying those cars. So a used car sometimes is four, five, and six years old. So what is a good car to buy when it's that old? There's no studies on those. You just gotta rely on hearsay and opinions of people out there making videos and content like myself or writing blogs like Consumer Reports, Motor Biscuit, so on and so forth. If you're a long time viewer on this channel, you know what the very first one is, but at the same time, if you're looking for the car buying tips, we're actually moving those over to Mike's Car Store YouTube channel, which I'm gonna link and tag in the description below. So make sure you go and subscribe to that one. So let's get into my number one worst vehicle to buy out there. And that would be any type of Hyundai or Kia with the GDI engine. GDI stands for gasoline direct injection engine. And these engines are a little bit more complicated out there than the normal direct injected engines out there. But they've had massive problems over the years that have came up way, way after ownership, especially after the first owner has maybe traded that car in. And we all know the issues on these cars. I've demonstrated it on this channel, but uh, yes, having these engines with the rods out of sync and out of whack, and then also the metal shavings in the engine. So here's the issue. Yes, you're gonna say, well, that's a warranty claim, and that is something that's under recall. That is correct, but in the event that, in my situation with Kia, they told me that there was nothing wrong with the vehicle. Why? Because these Kia service riders are tired of dealing with this problem. Go out in the back of any Kia and Hyundai store and look at the pile of engines that are out there. Kia and Hyundai has actually bought all of these engines and they're hoarding them in a warehouse so that they can use them for their warranty claims and the recall claims. So therefore, if you buy one and the Kia store does not want to sit there and make this a relevant warranty claim or recall claim, you're SOL because you're not gonna find a used engine that has not got that exact same problem out there on the open market because Kia and Hyundai own them all. So that's the number one problem with Kia and Hyundai right now. Secondly, part of this, is the whole USB stealing the car thing. I thought this was a meme on TikTok and then it came to fruition and people are actually doing it. And then one of my friends on Facebook actually got their Kia stolen, which is absolutely mind boggling. And then we can go into the uh, Kia Soul. The Kia Soul, just their, their torque converters absolutely just blow up on those cars at random. It's absolutely insane. And then lastly about the Kia and the Hyundais is their faults sense of security with their warranties. You gotta remember that these manufacturers are out there doing one thing. They're attempting to sell you a new car. They're not selling used cars. They sell new cars and they're only interested in selling new cars. So Kia and Hyundai have a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. They don't say that it's powertrain. They just say it's 10 year, 100, and then parentheses say powertrain or they say it real fast or real soft or whatever the case may be. So when you're out there looking at these, you may assume that this has this big warranty. In fact, they don't the second owner only gets the five year 60 powertrain warranty. So if you're looking at something with 60 and 70 and 80,000 miles, just to let you know, you're buying that car as is. You're not buying a car with any type of warranty. My number two in the list is the Ford Escape. I've always liked the Ford Escape. It's competed with me most of the times living here in Louisville, Kentucky, because that's where they're built. But uh, the Ford Escape has had some major transmission issues over the year. 2013 to 2021, there's major transmission issues with these cars. I've actually demonstrated on this channel showing you that we had a car with major transmission issues. We were able to fix it. It wasn't cheap. 
cheap, but I was able to get it done and we sold that to the customer and the customer absolutely loves that car. But that's something that is on you after you buy it from a dealer that if that goes out, it's, it's expensive to fix. So the 2013 to 2021 Ford Escape transmission issues is very relevant. And then you have the head gasket issues, which is a 21 hour job, if I remember right, 21 hours at $150 hour labor rate, which is average across the United States, that adds up to a very expensive repair for a head gasket issue on the Ford Escapes. Number three would be the Nissan SUVs and cars with the CVT transmission. Nissan Maxima, Nissan Rogue, Nissan Murano. All these cars with the CVT transmissions are very infamous of going out between 80 and 110,000 miles. It's just something that's out there. I've actually showed that on this channel as well, that we bought a Nissan Murano with a bad transmission that we knew, but we knew how to fix it. We knew how to get a remanufactured transmission and know that this vehicle is gonna last somebody another 80 to 100,000 miles. People still buy these with knowing that the issue's out there. I don't know why. I definitely recommend buying an extended warranty. Every single one of these customers that has bought one of these from me, buy an extended warranty, except for one that didn't buy one. Not upset, why would I be upset? So the CVT transmissions is a major issue in the Nissan cars and SUVs that have them. And so the biggest thing is you wanna drive that car to make sure that there's no issues. And obviously with us here, we take them on an extensive test drive to ensure because we don't wanna sell a bad car to anyone, but be wary out there that most places are just selling you something and they may not test drive it if much at all. Number four is the Dodge Journey. I've never been a fan of this vehicle, even when it was brand new. Uh, Dodge uh, has an infamous C, just kind of like Kia as well, to sell to a lot of subprime uh, customers. I don't know what it is about these two brands uh, that they sell a lot of people with bad credit cars. I've seen Chrysler Capital give 0% to somebody with a 550 credit score. Absolutely blows my mind that they get that. That would typically be a 19, 20, 21% interest rate if you have that type of credit score, just to kind of give some reference on that. So Dodge Journey, um, engine problems, suspension problems, transmission problems. You see the transmission issues here? The transmission issues are getting very, very prominent in a lot of used cars. I have a Toyota Camry that we just bought that's got a transmission shutter. Corvette has a transmission shutter from 2016 up to 2019. Chevy Camaro has got a transmission shutter in, in 2016. I own one, had that issue. It's really odd that we're having transmission issues out there, but it, it is what it is with these manufacturers. I don't know what's going on. And then Oslo on the Dodge Journey, uh, the third row is a joke in these cars. So if you're looking for a third row and you see Dodge Journey out there, and you're gonna probably be reading a lot of new car reviews, then uh, the Dodge Journey's got that third row, but there's not much room in that third row. And then when you put that third row up, you've got about this much space behind the third row and the lift gate. So there's no space behind the third row to store anything at all. So that's why that's making those lists is the engine transmission issues in the third row. And the last one in the list is the Jeep Patriot Cherokee Compass Renegade. <laughs> Yes, there's four of these in this group. And uh, I can just say that they suck. They're just horrible vehicles. They're slow, they make a lot of noise. They're not quiet in the cab. They're just absolutely horrific vehicles to own. And again, kind of like I mentioned with Dodge, uh, Jeep is part of FCA, and they typically are sold to people with uh, bad credit. And so therefore, I guess FCA, I don't know, it's my opinion uh, that I think that they can kind of go down a little bit on the quality control, but every single single one of those, the Patriot, the Cherokee, the Compass, and the Renegade all seem to uh, be uh, down in their quality uh, for longevity once these become used cars and outside of factory warranty. The Jeep Gladiator, uh, that thing's so slow, I, I think I could outrun it myself when it's trying to get to 60 miles an hour. I, it has no power whatsoever, but that uh, right there, I would stay away from the Hyundais and Kias, the Nissans, the Jeep, the Ford, and the Dodge. Now the most important portion of this video is to know that the protected customer is the happy customer. There is not a vehicle manufacturer today that is building junk vehicles. We're not talking about Daewoo in the early 2000s. We're not talking about Yugo in the 70s and 80s. There just is not a vehicle brand like that anymore. Every manufacturer in this country has got one thing in common, and that is they have a service department to fix things when they break. That's what they're there for. They don't care about oil changes or tire rotations. They want to repair your car when it breaks because 100% of cars made today are going to break. And when I say a protected customer is a happy customer, the best recommendation I can give you if you're buying a used car is buy an extended warranty, which I do a video on the extended warranties, which you'll find right up here. So make sure you buy an extended warranty because I guarantee if you have one, 
you'll be happy. And if something bad happens, it'll be fixed and you'll be on the road in no time.